vast, complex system of interconnecting riverways, isolated swamps and lakes, a habitat to rare species of plants and animals found nowhere else in the planet, and home to the indigenous Agusanon Manobo community of Mindanao. Take a closer look at the amazing world within the Agusan Marsh Wildlife Sanctuary. The Agusan Marsh Wildlife Sanctuary lies within the Agusan River in the province of Agusan del Sur, northeastern Mindanao. Its ecological significance spurred its protection through Proclamation No. 913 in 1996. In recognition of its global value, the Ramsar Convention included the Agusan Marsh Wildlife Sanctuary in the Ramsar List of Wetlands of International Importance on November 12, 1999. More recently, in 2018, through the Expanded National Integrated Protected Area System, or ENIPAS, it received stronger protection under Republic Act 11038. So, Agusan Marsh Wildlife Sanctuary is considered a cradle of life in the province of Agusan del Sur because it's um, it's actually a catch basin. The water coming from Davao, Compostela Valley, and Surigao merge in Agusan Marsh Wildlife Sanctuary dito sa Agusan del Sur. Kasi lahat ng tubig dito talaga siya, hinuhold ng Agusan Marsh Wildlife Sanctuary. So without Agusan Marsh Wildlife Sanctuary, yung Butuan City will be submerged underwater. Yung mga municipalities along Agusan River will be flooded during times of uh, heavy rains, during times of rainy season. The Agusan Marsh Wildlife Sanctuary features seven types of wetland habitats. Notable among the wetland habitats found in Agusan Marsh are peatlands. peatlands cover only 3% of the Earth's surface. But according to the International Union for Conservation of Nature, or the IUCN, about 30% of global carbon is stored in these peatlands. That's twice as much carbon that is stored in the world's forests. The protection and conservation of peatlands is crucial in mitigating the impact of climate change. When preserved, peatlands could sequester more carbon and lower greenhouse gas emission. But if destroyed, they will emit tons of CO2 and other greenhouse gases to the atmosphere. Agusan Marsh Wildlife Sanctuary holds the Kaimpugan peatlands, which is considered the largest and rarest known peat swamp forest in the Philippines. Peatlands, as I said, your typical landscape. Uh, they may seem idle, but God has placed it here for a very specific purpose. That is why we got to protect it. It serves as a sponge during wet time. Now take note, in the end months of the year, I'm talking of October, November and December, it is the time where we do experience severe weather disturbances at the middle part of the Agusan River Basin. That's the catch basin. The peatland serves as a sponge preventing water from immediately flowing downstream. Take note, without the Agusan Marsh and without the peatland areas, all of these floodwaters would simply flow downstream, inundating Butuan City, that's for sure. The 
The Agusan Mars is actually a unique ecosystem. Uh, it serves as a migration flyway of migratory birds of Southeast Asia. And it is home to some endemic species, just like the Philippine crocodile. Apart from being a rich feeding ground for migratory birds during winter season, it likewise provides refuge to a host of rare plants and animals that include Philippine endemic but threatened species like the Philippine crocodile. Isa ding unique feature ng Agusan Marsh Wildlife Sanctuary is the presence of our brother Manobos, the Agusanon Manobo, who live in floating houses. Paradise is found where nature and humanity coexist in mutual symbiosis. Modern science and traditional practices are key approaches in conservation where indigenous peoples have mastered stewardship of their natural environment. The indigenous knowledge systems and practices of the Agusanon Manobo community contribute to the economic, ecological, and socio-cultural value of Agusan Marsh Wildlife Sanctuary. Yung mga brother or sister IPs natin na nandito sa Agusan Marsh Wildlife Sanctuary, sila yung partners na natin sila in the park management because sila yung nasa loob ng protected area. So in terms of our biodiversity activities, in terms of our enforcement activities, sila yung tinatap po namin dito. So sila mismo, in their area, within their area, sila po yung tumutulong na maprotektahan po nila yung area nila because they are benefiting from the resources within the Agusan Marsh Wildlife Sanctuary. I would just like to add also the unique interplay of human and wildlife interaction in Agusan Marsh Wildlife Sanctuary. So yung harmonious relationship po ng mga tao with the wildlife is parang part na po kasi ng life ng mga tao, yung mga animals na andito sa loob ng Agusan Marsh Wildlife Sanctuary and they considered parang yung spirit guide din nila, yung mga wildlife na andito sa loob. Example po yung crocodile, uh, they have a great respect for crocodile kasi they believe na yung spirits ay andun din sa mga wildlife na yun. So they have practiced rituals para magbigay din galang in the divine figure, parang ganun po, na nagaguide sa kanila in their day-to-day -day life. Sa ako lang, nakita yun na ako ang Agusan Mars pinaka-importante sa muak sa usa ka tribong manubo sa agusanon kay maunay amo ang paningabuhian kung walay agusan mars dili sa ingon nga pagpaubos sa amo ang amo ang pagkatao maglisod jud mi kung may agusan mars diha tanan ang amo ang kinanglanon kay kung may agusan mars murag dili jud makapaeskwela ang mga tribo sa agusan mars kay ngano maura ni amo ang yaman kaning isda importante lang pagaampingan sa sunod pang henerasyon para ang akong anak Masubay pa sab nila, makita nila kung unsa ang kaklase sa isda, kung unsa kadagkuun. Muna karon na naningkamot mi sa kaming pangidaron, nga among gihatag sa among mga anak, sa mga kanang kinaiyahan nga maayo, para sa sunod, ilahagi hapon madala sa ilang anak, para ang kinaiyahan hangtod nga hangtod, daw sama sa inyong sa akong nabalhan nga habang buhay. The management of this Agusan Mars is actually directly handled by the PASO office, which is situated in the Mars. We have an office there, and the PINRO is supporting in terms of management in the technical aspects, in the monitoring, and especially in the enforcement activities like the, in the LAWIN. The convergent efforts of national and local government, local residents, indigenous communities, as well as local and global environmental organizations have all managed to keep Agusan Marsh a sanctuary protected for both nature and humanity. For the past three years, we organized, uh, we have Bantay Danao. They are biodiversity brigades, no? as the DNR, we collaborated with the DNR, the PASO office. We organized them as um, patrol uh, officers or wardens along the, the different lakes as well as the forest in the marsh. And at the same time, we develop a resource-based uh, livelihood. We have proliferating uh, water hyacinth. We convert that into slippers as well at the same time uh, charcoal briquettes made of water hyacinth. Also, we have wetland grass, uh, the tiko, they call that as tiko. We train the locals to make uh, bags, baskets, 
Uh, at the same time, we have a uh, unique uh, trees or a fruit tree, Katmon and Libas and other wildlife uh, fruit trees within the marsh. We trained the locals or the IP community. We have now cookies made of Katmon and Libas at, at the same time, the jam making. We are also promoting ecotourism as part of the conservation activities in the marsh wherein the local communities are engaged in ecotourism or biodiversity-friendly enterprises to further conserve our natural resources in the area. So we are capacitating our local communities to be part of the management of the protected areas because the protected area office could not do this alone. Understanding the little-known facts about wetlands and their value to humanity leads one to ponder on how blessed we are to live on this planet. Truly, the Agusan Marsh Wildlife Sanctuary is one of the rare treasures you will find on our fragile Earth. Where land meets the sea, the rhythmic dance of nature generates life. Gracefully swaying to the tides of change, it soon transforms into a nurturing abode from ridge to reef. Today, biodiversity flourishes at the Mabini Protected Landscape and Seascape. The Mabini Protected Landscape and Seascape covers the coastal areas of Compostela Valley and the province of Davao del Norte, including Pindasan and Copiat Islands in the Davao Gulf. Owing to its verdant terrestrial and rich marine resources, it was brought to the spotlight of conservation as a component of the National Integrated Protected Area System, or NEPAS Act of 1992. In May 2000, it was proclaimed a protected area. Comprising of six coastal barangays of Babini, approximately 14.5 kilometers stretch of shoreline. Lahat na coastal barangay ng Mabini is covered by the MPLS. Previously, covering more than 6,000 hectares of seascape and landscape, including mangroves. And last 2016, we validate again ng DNR, naging more than 7,000 hectares na lahat ang, ang total land area ng and landscape it is also included in the 94 legislated protected areas under Republic Act number no. 11038 or the expanded National Integrated Protected Area System Act of 2018. Seven coastal barangays are covered by the protected area and these are San Antonio, Tagnanan, Tibagon, Pindasan, Del Pilar, Kuambog, and Kadunan. From its dense inland and beach forests to the rich diversity of marine life, the Mabini protected landscape and seascape is home to endemic, rare, and endangered wildlife. The protected area is very rich in corals. And in fact, uh, we have this uh, banner species, we call it Baramundi or Hansback grouper. And that's what we use in our logo. And it's also one of the rich areas for fishing and it's part of the Davao Gulf wide expanse of coral reef and marine resources. And we also have these species of turtles and the same, these are endangered species that need to be protected. This area is just few of the remaining areas that have excellent population of corals. The collective conservation efforts of the government and the community such as the Scuba Sorero, a monthly coastal cleanup of underwater garbage are important in achieving a sustainable future for the Mabini protected landscape and seascape. Bilang Municipal Environment and Natural Resources Officer, 
ang trabaho ko po is from ridge to wreck. So since ang coastal po namin is uh, isang MPLS, may mga series of activities kami na ginagawa dito like uh, coastal cleanup, then mangrove planting, then we have the escobarillo. We were formed by our PASU 2016 to uh, invite us kung ano yung pwede naming maitulong in our environment, especially sa aming protected area. So kami na grupo, we are the Blue Brigades. Uh, isa kami sa mga PO na na-create ng uh, Office of the Denar. Ang aming participation no, is to, uh, to clean up Uh, the whole shoreline protected area of Mabini. Daming mga babayan mitabang yod sa pagtanaw sa pagprotekta sa among mga uh, yamang dagat dinhi sa among lugar. So naga-schedule ni ka isa sa isa kabulan sa pagpamunit sa mga basura diri sa among mga palibot sa hunasan kay mahadlok mi nga ang mga basura makaadto sa dagat so makadaot na siya sa atong kalikasan so kami nga mga uh, women association dito sa MPLS nagkaroon kami ng mga project halimbawa man lang sa pagluluto nag uh, banana chips taro chips ginagawa namin yon para makatulong kasi hindi hindi tanan ba nga dili tanang panahon nga magadto lang ni sa dagat magsaling so as this picture perfect beauty and its rich marine resources begin to attract commerce and tourism the mabini protected landscape and seascape is confronted with issues and problems that often come with development Foremost among these is the management of garbage and illegal fishing. Marami tayong mga tinatawag na POs, People's Organization, na meron tayong mga assignments. No? Kasi dito lang sa Mabini, protected area natin. Because of the tourism, marami na tayong basura, bulk of garbages na dito. Isa sa problema natin dito is the uh, illegal fishing. So, dati-rate maraming putukan dyan. So, maraming mga bahay dito sa isda natin na sira na. That's the reason na nagpapatrol din kami dito. To drive out the unnecessary illegal fishing. It is inevitable that uh, Mabini will become, as I had said earlier, one of the tourism destinations. In fact, the provincial government uh, by Governor Tyrone Uy has uh, promoted that area as part of the loop, as I have said. So, meron tayong mga hot springs, meron tayong mga inland bodies of water, and so coming from, is either from the ridge or from the reef, that is one of the destinations na pinopromote ngayon ng provincial tourism. But we have uh, very nice beaches there. It entices people to come and of course with tourists we have garbage and development along the prohibited shoreline and yung tulad ng Boracay no? na along the beaches developments proliferated and that is what we have to manage as a protected area because protected areas are the last frontier of our true natural resources that is what uh, we are looking into. Conserving nature is not just about preserving the beauty of landscapes and seascapes. It is understanding our critical role as wise guardians tasked to nurture and protect. Key to all this is embracing development that is both sustainable and science-based, and the kind that is in balance with nature and the environment.